Minister elect, the Honorable Gaston. Let me just say we have this press conference is being carried live by ABS radio and television. We also have representative from Observer Media Group, CMC, Caribbean Times, Rogers Radio, and ZDK Radio. Prime Minister-elect Brown will make a statement, following which he will take a few questions from the media representatives. Firstly, I'm asking the usual rules apply. When you are posing a question, please identify yourself and the media house you are representing. I'll now turn over to our Prime Minister-elect, the Honorable Augustine Brown. Thank you very much, Mr. Barnes. I start by saying, to God be the glory, great things he has done. Amen. Certainly he has done great things for Antigua and Barbuda. And today, June 13th, 2014, is certainly the dawn of a new day here in Antigua and Barbuda. I'd like to thank sincerely all those who participated in the campaign, especially our candidates. We have a number of new candidates who won the seats, who will be members of parliament. We have Comrade Max Fernandez, Comrade Colin Tintin James, Michael Brown, Samantha Marshall. I understand Dean Jonas is well on his way to becoming the representative of St. George. Comrade Melford Nicholas. Arthur Nibs in Barbuda. Yes. Yeah. From all indications, we are likely to end up with 15 <coughs> seats. And I also want to commend the two losing candidates. Evidently, they were part of a team. They would have contributed to the success of the team. And they can be assured that we value the contribution and that we will certainly remember their contributions and reward their contributions. Yes. I want you to forgive me in the sense that <clears throat> I feel a little weepy this evening, or this morning for that matter. You know, as I drove through the gates here at our campaign headquarters, the outpouring of love from the people is just, just overwhelming. In fact, the love and affection that I've enjoyed during the campaign season was overwhelming. And I would like to sincerely thank those individuals who supported us over the years, over the months, those who came to our various public rallies, our various functions, those who gave us the energy to continue our campaign even when things were very difficult, even when monies were scarce, even when anxieties were flying high within the organization. They stood with us, they were unflinting, and we value your support. It is evident that the people have spoken, and they have spoken resoundingly. We are very humble by the mandate that you have given us. We understand the enormity of the job to fix this country and to put our people back to work. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as much as we are celebrating a victory this morning, the truth is the work has just begun. Yes. The reality is this country is in dire straits and it will require the collective efforts of all not only the candidates of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party and other members, but certainly the entire population. The former Prime Minister called me 
at about 11 o'clock last evening and conceded and also pledged to work with us to heal this country and to move our country forward. It's important that we as a matter of priority conjoin our efforts to move this country forward. For us to embark on a healing process and to make sure that we move forward as a strong nation, a united nation, to achieve our ultimate objective of transforming Antigua and Barbuda into an economic powerhouse, one in which we'll be able to improve the living standards of all the people. And I want you to understand that this victory is a victory for you, the people. Not a victory for us, the candidates, per se, but for you primarily. And you know, there are a number of people who I'd like to single out to thank. Evidently, again, reiterating the mercies and blessings of the man above. And certainly, my dear wife, Maria Brown, who stood with me. I also want to acknowledge the contributions of my mentally ill mother. Patricia Rose Richards, and I have to tell you, her contribution would have far exceeded the contribution of my father, Hussein. Yes. If it wasn't for her contributions, I definitely would not have reached this far. Notwithstanding her mental problems, she struggled to raise her children, and she did a great job. In fact, my only disappointment in life is the fact that she's not in a position to enjoy the fruits of my labor the way in which I would love her to enjoy those fruits. However, God knows best, and perhaps maybe her condition would have made me a stronger individual, in the sense that, you know, she became mentally ill when I was nine years old, and myself, my sister Blondell, we had to struggle in this country to survive. And if it's one thing that I would like the population to understand, and for them to emulate out of this victory, in terms of my ascension to the leadership of this country is the fact that any one of us, any one of us who is determined enough, who is unrelenting enough, who is disciplined enough, could make it to the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And notwithstanding whatever difficulties you may be faced with in life, I say to you, do not give up. Always keep hope alive. The truth is, even in our own organization, 18 months ago, our organization was on the state, or in the state, or in a possible state of implosion. But we never relented. We knew that we had a role and a serious job and undertaking to save this country. And we were able to pull our institution together and to bring it to the stage to the extent that the Labour Party today is a fiercely united institution. I want to thank everyone who participated in that change management process that took place after the convention of November 25, 2012. I think we have established very clearly that the skills within the Labour Party are second to none because the history is that other institutions within the region and extra-regionally who have had those changes invariably would have taken decades to heal. We did it in a matter of months, and I want to commend all of the members of my team. <laughs> Fundamentally, You know, we have actually set a very 
impressive vision for this country to transform Antigua and Barbuda into an economic powerhouse. And I do not want anyone in this country to take that vision lightly. In fact, I'm calling on each Antiguan and Barbudan to buy into that vision and to understand that it is doable. I said before that the country is in dire straits, but I remain hopeful and certainly very optimistic about the future of this country under your new Labour Party administration. So it's important for all Antiguans and Barbudans to understand that we have the capacity to achieve that vision. And I want us to conjoin and to work towards that vision, to lift this little beautiful country, and to make Antigua and Barbuda the envy of other countries in the world. I'm convinced that we have the capacity to return full employment to this country. I'm convinced that we have the capacity to attract unparalleled investments to Antigua and Barbuda, to grow our country's economy, and to put our people back to work. I would say to you tonight that there will be no quick fixes. Clearly, it will take some time to get out of the economic and social difficulties that we face with today. But one thing I can show and assure you is that the work will start from today, not tomorrow, but from today. And it will continue because ultimately, we are servants of the people. And even in my case, I do not necessarily see myself as a prime minister divorced from the people, but in essence, as a servant leader someone who is dedicated to serve and to empower you, the people. And I want to thank you for the confidence and trust that you have reposed in myself and my team. In fact, the victory itself actually speaks volumes. I don't think we could have desired a better outcome in terms of the results. And we will be eternally grateful for your support. And I say to each and every Antiguan and Barbudan that we will honor your support. We will never betray your trust. We will work relentlessly for your development. I want to say to my colleagues, based on the mandate that we have been given by the people, they clearly expect us to perform. We are their hopes. We are their aspirations. And we must make sure that we hit the road running and to provide opportunities for the people of this country. So no longer will Antigua and Barbuda be a country of misery, a country of calamity, but Antigua and Barbuda will become a country of hope, a country of opportunities. And ultimately, with your support and God's guidance, we will transform this country into an economic powerhouse. I want to thank you once again, and I want to reassure you that we are very appreciative of your support and your perform. I know that many of you have asked whether or not today should be a public holiday. My first reaction is that perhaps it should not be, in the sense that I believe that we must ensure that we do nothing to affect the productivity of the country. I know for some people it means literally missing a day's work and could make a difference in terms of them providing for themselves and their families. So taking those things into consideration, ordinarily, I would not have contemplated suggesting or confirming today <laughs> as a public holiday but <laughs> when, you, when you look at the celebrations out there I think it has taken on a life of its own and we have a policy in the party that the voice of the people is the voice of God the people want a holiday Today shall be all. 
you again. I thank you very much. And we look forward to you continuing to stand with us, to help us with your good counsel. We do not profess to be authorities on all issues. We want to have an all-inclusive society in which we bring everyone on board. And I want to say to those of you who support us, we do not expect you to scorn those or to alienate those who did not support us. We must embrace everyone going forward. It's the only way we'll achieve that noble objective of transforming this country into an economic powerhouse. It may sound unachievable, but I guarantee you that maybe 10 years from now, you will recall this conversation in which your servant leader said to you that we will transform this country into an economic powerhouse in the Caribbean.